Hello. For those of you that don't know what Ravitch or Noose is or Pectus Excavatum, um, please look it up online. There's a lot more that I can explain, but the gist of it is that it's a congenital disease or uh, deformity where the um, sternum is depressed inward and um, can cause some problems with your breathing and your heart and that sort of thing. A lot of people are told that it's uh, there's nothing they can do about it at a young age and don't worry about it. Um, but I found out later that uh, it actually did cause me, uh, my heart was sort of squished and a little bit of problems I ended up falling down, breaking three ribs. And I've been through the entire process of um, seeing all the different surgeons and picking what's best. And a lot of people have asked me why I chose to go with Ravitch over Noose. So I'm going to describe today a little bit about the differences of Ravitch versus Noose and my experience with what's going on with Ravitch versus Noose. First of all, um, what I'm referring to, the Ravitch versus Noose, these are two procedures that they use to correct pectus excavatum. Um, I'm about one month out after the surgery of the Ravitch um, technique. So you can still see the scar here where they, they, um, they did the incision. Inside here, up here, all the way down to here, they put in sort of a, a dissolving plate which will dissolve over time. These, two, these holes here were where the holes were the tubes for the uh, drainage. Um, I'm happy with the way everything's turned out. Things are healing pretty good right now. Um, I don't not have the bandages on anymore, but this is this is fairly recent. So um, it's only been one month, and I'm not, I'm not on any pain medication right now, and I actually feel pretty damn good. I'm a little bit tired right now, but um, I'm pretty good. All right, so back to Ravage versus Noose. Uh, Ravage is the uh, is a technique which was traditionally used to repair pectus excavatum in using Ravage. They would traditionally cut you open, one or two incisions, and they would repair your sternum, which is sort of a long uh, rectangular bone that's connected by cartilage to your ribs. Your ribs are in front like this, and your, your sternum would run down the middle, not touching the ribs, but connected by cartilage. It, traditionally, with pectus excavatum patients, the sternum is either beveled inward toward their spine and or their... Um, the sternum itself sometimes bends itself. Mine did. They actually had to take a wedge out of my sternum and pull it forward, in addition to wrapping it with the, um, with the heat wrap stuff that kept it in place. Now, I'm fortunate that in today's technology, they have dissolving plates and screws, and so I don't have to go back in for another surgery. I only went in for the one surgery. So today, when I talk to you about Ravage versus Noose, I'm gonna to refer to the modified or updated Ravage procedure, and then I'm gonna to refer to the newest technology with the Noose procedure. Move this up a little bit so you can see. A little better, all right. So, Ravage versus Noose. Everybody's been asking me why I chose Ravage, um, and I went over a lot of a lot of questions, and I really did a lot of research into this. And here's some of the reasons why. I broke it down into ten main categories, um, with significance to each of the um, things that are going to come into play with you if you're looking at getting the surgery done, whether you're symptomatic or not, if you're just having this done for cosmetic reasons and so forth. So I'm going to break it down. Uh, number one is time. Um, it's a bit picky for the noose procedure initially because the noose procedure where they put the bar inside of you and they flip it forward and that presses your sternum outward, um, the noose procedure has some pros and cons to it. With a ravage procedure, they go in, they fix the uh, sternum, they pull it forward, you're, you're in, you're out, it's, it's more extreme, it, you know, you might be in more pain if they don't give you the pain meds correctly. Um, and you're, it takes a little bit more time at first. However, on the flip side of that, the noose procedure, they go in and they put a bar in and, and like a retainer, they flip the bar and that pushes your sternum outward. Um, results are pretty quick with that one as well. Um, the pain, you're only in the hospital, you're in the hospital a little shorter period of time. However, you're gonna be going back for many years. Like with braces, with the noose techn technique, um, your teeth might not stay in place. Your sternum might not either. It might go back in. Uh, I had a close friend of mine who had the um, news procedure done, and his did. It went back in on, only on one side, and he had to have that re-repaired. Um, took him another couple of years to have another bar put back in and have it all repaired. And he's concerned that it might be going back as well. So my, my, my personal experience 
was that I did not want to have the bar. I saw how many years of pain he was in and a lot of the things that he went through, I preferred to have it done one time and finish. So as far as time goes, a little bit more time in the hospital for the news procedure than the, excuse me, a little more initial time in the hospital for the ravish procedure, the one that I had done. It usually takes about seven days in the hospital. Um, to extensive procedure to actually go in and cut and replace the cartilage and, and get a plate put over it. So it is more extensive, but as far as time goes, there's not a lot of difference except for the fact that you're going to be putting a lot more time going in for checkups and another surgery down the road with the noose procedure. So as far as time goes, I liked the Ravage procedure much more. Number two, pain. Um, no doubt the Ravage surgery that I had done was more painful than any other surgery I can pretty much imagine. Um, maybe open heart surgery is probably comparable. Comparable. However, at the same time, you know they're cutting it's the centerpiece of your body. Um, after the first few days, though, the pain you know levels decreased dramatically. Uh, I had it done. They gave me an epidural at the beginning. As long as they can control your pain, you're you're going to be all right. Um, once you're out of the hospital, they give you some decent pain medications to take for the first week. Sleep's a little bit of a pain, but pain in general for both of them are going to be high. Um, the reason why I did not like the news procedure is because I don't want to be on pain meds for an extended period of time. I know what damage it does to your liver. I understand the damage that it does to you over a long period of time and the fact that you might, may or may not become addicted to the pain meds. So for the news procedure, I did not want to have the bar in here pressing on me where I'd have to keep taking pain meds for three to five years. Uh, with the Ravage technique, it's been a month now and aside from the pain at night from time to time when I have to take the pain meds, during the day, most of the time when I'm moving around, I have full flexibility and motions up and down in all different directions with no problem. There's no bar on the side, there's nothing pressing. This is, this is me and the plate itself that's inside of me is, is slowly dissolving over time. So um, aside from that dissolving, um, I'm definitely happier with the, with the pain from, uh, with the pain from the ravage technique. Reliability is my third one. Um, I was talking about reliability and again I've referred to this earlier. I had a friend that had the noose procedure and in his procedure the pectus excavatum on the right side dipped back in into his chest. Literally the, after they removed the bar his body just went back to the way it was. Which isn't surprising. Your bodies have a natural tendency to want to be that way. Therefore, I like the ravage procedure. The ravage procedure goes in, removes the sternum, repairs the sternum, puts it back into place, leaves the sheath for your cartilage to regrow, and over the next few months, your, your cartilage actually does regrow into its proper place, giving you the full amount of air and chest and everything that you would need from the surgery. So as far as reliability goes, um, definitely was leaning towards the ravage because I just wanted it done once and I wanted it done right and to be finished with it. Um, as far as looks, a lot of people have different um, opinions about the looks of the surgery themselves. Um, for me, I'm very happy with the way that, 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 this, te that this technique looks. Um, I'm not back in shape yet. I haven't been back to the gym working out. I don't have the pecs yet or anything that I want back on my chest, nor do I have the six pack. But there is one great thing about it as far as the looks go. A lot of you will notice the sort of pot belly effect that Pectus Exavata has. You have this dent in the middle and you have this pot belly below it. Um, as soon as you get the procedure done, you notice immediately the pot belly disappears. Your, your, your organs and your, your stuff go back up into the place where they're, they're supposed to be. Um, your stomach wall is flat again. And um, a lot of people have told me it's so frustrating having a pot belly and you don't even have any fat on it. It's just this, your organs being pushed out. For me, I actually got a stomach wall hernia for a while as well. Um, my organs were just being pressed down and I ended up having a hernia that I still have yet to get repaired. It's just a little hernia, but it's still there. I did not want to get it repaired until I had the pectus excavatum surgery because I didn't want to go back in and have it re-repaired every time the pressure was too great. So as far as looking